All right. What is this lady? Hey, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. This is a cool hangout, half an hour every week uh, with me, Lady Ada. Mr. Lady Ada and I work at the Adafruit Factory. We do all this design electronics and stuff. But uh, right now, the factory is a little quiet, and so are we. We're going to watch what everybody in the makeup community is crafting, hacking, 3D printing this week. Come on by. Uh, we got space for more folks. Let's have some really cool Adafruit peeps here. Going to catch you up on what they have been doing, and it's been amazing. Had a very busy summer, so um, let's just kick it off with Adafruit folks, which uh, they're all, you're we're all friends. So how about let's start with Phil B, who's got some old computers and a low mic, but he's going to do the best he can. I'm told, yeah, my mic is bad, <clears throat> so I'm just going to shout if it's yeah. silly. So you know, I've been collecting old computers, um, nothing super valuable, just things I thought were cool. Um, but the criteria are it has to be small enough to fit in a shadow box. It has to look cool. And so one that I, I got uh, recently, and this is this is probably the one I wanted most. Um, it's the Sinclair QL. And uh, well, I've never seen this. Exactly. I, I, I had seen it back, you know, in the 80s, but I, I never actually saw one in person until I went and tracked one down on eBay. Can we get a close up of those keypads? Because those, key, yes. those keycaps are amazing. Uh, has the Olivetti style uh, keys on it. Totally. And it's Those are great. It's a beautiful looking machine. It is, you know, using it, it's it's just horrible. The keyboard is just it horrible feel. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't use floppies. It has these weird little these little tape loop cassette things. And um, you know, so it's it's honestly it's it's not a fun computer to use, but it is just freaking just beautiful. I love the, the angularness of it, you know. I, I, I think it's tied with the uh, the original Next Cube in terms of just awesome looking computers. You can totally tell the PS4 is based on, like, they totally ripped off this design. Yeah. Like, it's got this PS4, like, the grid and then, like, the curve thing. Yeah, it's... it's totally. So the Next Cube wouldn't fit on my wall in Shadow Box. So, so this is going to get uh, boxed. And uh, I, I just thought the industrial design was, was really sharp. Yeah, that's that's a that's cool. That's a way more beautiful computer it, than the, it looks like it, it's, it was designed too well for the '80s. Like it almost doesn't belong. Well, also it was kind of the the end of that. You know, it used to be computers had the the um, you know the bread box format where everything was in the keyboard, and uh, you know after this kind of everything went to the uh, you know they were starting to to be desktop boxes. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Have this All you know, right. everything in the keyboard. Um, anyway, that's that's in my collection. I also wanted to mention um, this Friday I'm going to be part of a panel at uh, Worldcon, the World Science Fiction Convention in San Jose. Uh, it is a panel about with four people about uh, lighting up costumes. So I'll be one of the folks there if anyone happens to be around and uh, wants to light up costumes. We'll be talking about that. Okay. Epic. Looking forward to the tweets. All right. Okay. Next up, Pedro. Hey, guys. So uh, no show today. No, I was sick. Um, but it's okay. We're resting up for our 200th episode. And this week we released a super easy project for the Cricut. It is a Lego compatible little enclosure for the um, battery uh, component that we use for the Cricut. So it just houses the triple um, or three AA batteries inside. And of course, out of a lot of Lego stuff, we have all dress it up with whatever other Lego projects that we worked in, uh, inspired by the really cool projects that uh, JP has been working on. Lamar was like, hey, why don't we make a Lego compatible box for that? So super easy, prints in multiple parts, no supports needed. All of the files, the step files, the Fusion 360 files available on our GitHub, as well as learn guide for that. I have a nice little video also. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it next week on our show. Yeah, we've got a bunch of, um, behind the scenes, we've got a bunch of designs for like Lego compatibility yes. with these motors and robot parts. I think it's a good mix. Like I think Lego is best for the gears and the axles and the construction. Mm -hmm. But then when you actually want to program and automate stuff, I you know I love CircuitPython and MakeCode. Yes. So this is a good mix. And I like, I like having all these little Lego compatible things. It just it also means like, you don't have to worry about gluing stuff. You just like, you know, yep. get one of those large sheets and you just stack all your pieces on exactly, and yeah. yeah, why why make it like a Lego like system where you can just use Lego? Exactly. Yeah. And then like Dole is working on some really cool Lego compatible cases for CPX too. So should work perfectly with that. 
Yes, good soon. stuff coming soon. Yes. All right, next up, JP, what are you making in your yeah, workshop? Right. So what I'm making is a beam of operation. This is the prototype one, but I'm going to be uh, showing you in a second the the next version, which, which is the one I'll work on on the show tomorrow. So it uses a Circuit Playground Express and uh, capacitive touch. So when you place little pieces inside that you need to extract to get Adabot healthy again, you have to do so carefully because if you get too close to the edges there and touch the copper tape, you're going to trigger the buzzer. Uh, so it's a pretty simple construction. It's short alligator clips going to these little bits of copper uh, tape. And I'm actually making, spent some time today making a nice little uh, printable file that people will be able to use to make their own version. So this is just glued to one of our Adabox uh, standard boxes here. Uh, and you'll be able to uh, print out or 3D print if you want the little pieces that are going to go inside wrenches and batteries and LEDs and things. Um, and this was partly inspired by a project that um, they did for a maker camp over at Make Magazine using the Makey Bot uh, and a Makey Makey. That's the word make a whole lot of times. Uh, Makey Makey is a pretty cool way to do it, but we thought doing this with Circuit Playground Express would give you a chance to have a standalone one that doesn't plug into a computer. Uh, and you can do some interesting things with uh, coloring lights or maybe make a game out of how many times you can touch it before you have to uh, move on to another player. So uh, that is tomorrow's project for the workshop and uh, the guide will be coming out on Friday. All right, awesome. I think people are super excited to relive their childhoods. Everyone played, well, at least we're on my age, everyone played that old operation game. With well, like Laura, the it's my turn to operate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go watch the '80s commercial. I'm sure. It, I'm sure it didn't age very well. Go look I remember up the Funny Bone. That was like the only one that like anyone was like, oh, the Funny Bone. Like, what is that? Uh, like, I think the Charlie Horse or something. I wish Ben. All right. Well, we'll we'll play that again. We'll we'll get to remake our childhood favorites. All right. Thanks, and uh, people watching, don't forget we're gonna uh, JP's gonna show that off on his show tomorrow on Thursday. If you want more. Next up, Aaron. Aaron, what are you crafting? Is, it's the middle of August, and so that means it's officially Halloween, I think. Yes. So, <laughs> I've been uh, getting started on a bunch of Halloween projects. Um, the, the one that I'm working on right now is this beautiful LED mask project. So uh, oh, it's great. a lot of different layers of um, vinyl cut vinyl, I suppose, and then it also has a one-way mirror inside, which is how it looks so cool with the neopixels just around the edge. It makes the whole thing just glow, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's making me really happy. I'm doing a bunch of different versions of them. Um, I've got I've got a dragon, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I just did a bunny rabbit one, too, just because a friend of mine requested that. So the bunny is really cute. When you yeah, that, the um, full glowing effect is really interesting. I mean, it's really hard to get that with diffuse plastic. So I think it's interesting. You, you ended up using one-way mirror, which like I don't think anyone's ever thought of using for this purpose, but it looks amazing. It does. I, I'm really pleased with how it's turning out, um, and it just diffuses really well. Um, she's taking this one to Burning Man, which is coming up next week, I think, all my friends are doing So I'm doing that one, and then I'm going to do like a, a Little Mermaid crown one as well. Um, so I've got a couple of other designs, and then, of course, for Halloween, I'm coming up with a skull. Yay! Um, so hopefully I'll be able to use the brand new Halloween board in this, and, uh, you know, that one has a little uh, TFT screen on it, so I'll be able to maybe add a, a third eye in the middle right here or something that just... Yeah, that'll be cool. It'll be the, the spooky third eye. Yeah. All right. Looks awesome. I'm sure Phil B will look forward to that, seeing his code in a mask. All right. Thanks for the update, Aaron. All right. Colin. Hey. hey, what's up, Colin? Water on the knee, $1,000 fee. That's all I remember. <laughs> I'm still, I'm, there's a lag here. Um, right now, I am working on making a video about Adafruit IO, and I was exploring some of the different guys we've got there. And I decided to make a little demo example. And you may be familiar with the concept of the physical gauge. So I have my Adafruit IO interface. You're gonna do a live demo. When, is... when I, live, live demo, right? Yeah. Oh, when I adjust the slider, which you, you probably this can't the, see. This is the internet of things I've heard so much about. It's up and coming. You're gonna hear more, but uh, you know, you can't do this, but you just trust me that when I when I touch my okay. interface, oh, it, it, it moved. Changing. We saw it. Uh, I, I don't have the overhead active right now. The meter so of how much internet of thing is happening. 
right, so this will be a, good um, uh, speed. Fast, yeah. What are you running that on? Is that a, a feather? That is a feather huzzah. Yes. Straight Classic. And, simple. and just a little micro servo. Yeah. On the back piece of paper. That's all. Something okay. simple. Well, people really like the um, learn video that you did. So this Adafruit IO video is going to be amazing. More stuff. And better. Yeah. A little physicality in there. Demonstration. Other than that, I'm keeping cool. Hope you all guys right. are too. All right, cool. Phil, do you want me to? I can show off some coming soon. You you can do, yeah, you can do it coming soon. Let me see. Why if not? Can, let me see if, if, if I can, can get the camera over to it. If you not, that you uh, want to show the see. overhead. Yeah. Yeah, that worked great. All right. Wait, this is. So it's fine. You're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. Flip. Okay, so I have a mega show. No, just kidding. It's something else. So this is a board that we just got some prototypes for, and this chip here. This is um, an at mega two five six zero. This is like the classic um, Arduino mega, but this is a SAMD fifty one, and the SAMD twenty one chip, which we know and love so much. Here at Adafruit, we use it in our M0, Metro, M0 Trinket, whatever. That chip didn't come with enough pins for a mega. Like, they just didn't make one in a package large enough. Like, the largest package, I think, was maybe 68 pins, which isn't enough. You actually need, like, a 128-pin package because there's just, just all these pins here. They just add up. Like, you do the math, it's, like, 80 total GPIO. But the SAMD51, um, there's a version with 128 pins, which is what we needed, even the 100-pin version didn't have enough pins for us because uh, we just have so much stuff going on here. We've got the standard GPIO, um, power, and then we even added a little um, SD card slot. Uh, it's a flip up top, so you could flip up and insert an SD card. And then the Kiss by Flash debug. So this is the first prototype. You can see uh, Dean worked on this, and it's an epic route to get all the pins everywhere. But it should be mega compatible. And it's going to be pretty sweet running circuit python will be really fast arduino will be really fast 128 megahertz one megabyte of flash and then i'll stick an extra large spi flash here maybe like 16 megabytes so this will be something people have been asking for and so this is a coming soon yeah we'll show this on ask an engineer as well yeah it's not out yet but well i want to have more time to talk about it here because i'm really getting to show it off but this is green uh, green prototype and then phil b is going to do the silk screen for it so this is what it looks like before the phil b treatment Paint Your Dragon does epic silk screens for us. So uh, anytime you're like, wow, that board looks really good, it's probably because she'll be did it. <laughs> and that's my, uh, it's not out yet, show and tell. All right. That was cool. Cool. And, you know, people have been asking for it every week. OK, well, that's it. All right, thanks, everybody. Yeah, we'll see everybody next week, 7.30 PM Eastern Standard Time. Ask an Engineer starts in just a few minutes. Bye. Bye, everybody.